What were um, you saying again? Uh, I don't know, because you never listened to me. I've forgotten how to speak for myself. I listen to you every day. Oh, I say you're waiting. You didn't listen to me that meeting. Performance. You shouted me down. You're suffers. just a bully. <laughs> how dare you? A bully. I don't know how you've I don't know how you've managed. You stay behind every day. You can't, manage, me. You can't me. manage the team. How can you say that? Okay, so welcome. Owen and Johanna. As you can see, we have a dispute on our hands. Now, Owen, Owen and Joanna have been working in a, in a large bank for the last six years. Um, Joanna's very upset with uh, Owen. She's raised the grievance as a result of this outburst that happened very recently in a rather lovely hotel over in West London. And um, she's, she's lodged a formal grievance and our two parties now are no longer communicating. There's a substantial breakdown in trust and respect. The good news is that this organisation has, inst has instigated a mediation programme. And our mediator, Thomas, is sat here. Now, this is the, we're going to move into the day of mediation. And at the beginning of the mediation process, our mediator, Thomas, is going to meet with Joanna. And here we have Thomas at the first meeting with Joanna, listening very carefully to what Joanna's concerns are. She's talking about what happened, her perceptions of what happened, how it impacted on her, what went wrong, what's going right in the, in the, in the relationship. And primarily what Thomas is doing here is listening actively. He's asking questions, he's checking, clarifying, probing. He's not judging, he's not blaming, he's not wagging a finger and he's not tutting. What he is doing is really engaging with Joanna. And at the end of this meeting, Joanna feels heard, listened to. She feels that she's got some of the issues off her chest. And she feels that Thomas now has some understanding and insight. Now, Thomas would have had the first meeting with both of our parties. And now we're going to see Thomas conclude this meeting and come and sit with Owen. So Thomas now has met both of the parties once. He's got the most clear, contemporaneous overview of the conflict. He understands the issues, the push points and the challenges. And here we see Thomas, our mediator, sitting with Owen at a second meeting. This is later in the morning of the mediation process. And this meeting is a little bit more like a coaching meeting. What would you like to say to Joanna? How do you think Joanna might respond? How do you think Joanna's feeling today? How are you feeling about this? And what Owen, is do what Owen um, and Thomas are doing is preparing what Owen would like to say to Joanna. We're not censoring or censuring. We're not helping him to craft what he's wanting to say. We're just helping him to think it through and be prepared. We end this meeting, and then suddenly what happens is we move into the joint mediation meeting. So if we just uh, swing our chairs around. And here we see Thomas. <coughs> at the joint meeting. Now the joint meeting has started with Thomas establishing some basic ground rules. They're guidelines, nothing more. It's about having an open and honest conversation, being respectful to one another, engaging with each other constructively and positively where, where they're able. Each party will then have a period of uninterrupted speaking time where each party is able to say what they're feeling, knowing that the other person's really listening to them, really hearing what they're saying. Thomas will ask some questions. What's the impact been? What do you need? What would the consequences of failure be? What would the consequences of success be? And each party is able to hear each other. Now we come into the mediation process and we're in the middle of the exchange. Okay. Please yourselves. I was saying, he shouted me down when I was really upset. I, he hadn't signed off my annual leave. That meant I didn't get to see my father this summer. <laughs> Fantastic. So how does he respond? Well, what's the top under? But well, you knew this was the case. What? Tell me. That I asked you to sign off my holiday leave, you, I don't know, forgot, or you were doing something else. This is your job, and now the flight's got too expensive and I can't go. Hang on a second, wait. You submitted a grievance against me, yeah? Somebody agrees with me. I, I, so you say it's about the leave, but we talked about this. I've actually already apologised. I don't think we talked about it. It's not about the leave. It's not about the leave. I think this is about actually, you know, I've been manager for a couple of years now. You've never accepted this. You've never accepted what I do. You've never accepted It's not about leave. And I wish you'd give up that pretense. It's about the fact you don't respect me. You've never, never acknowledged what we're trying to do here. We both went for the job. And I came out with the job. And if, if I got the job, never, I would be able to manage fundamental this. issues like signing off staff holiday leave. Can I, can I just check in with you, Donna? What, what would you say is the, the fundamental issue here that you want to get across to, to Owen? What, what's important to you? I want him to manage properly. Uh, 
I want them to respect my opinions and, and respect my time. Now I don't get to spend my summer the way I wanted to. So, so respect is clearly something that's, that's really important here and important to you. Um, would you be able to share with own perhaps what, what respect looks like for you? Okay, so I had this issue, and instead of dealing with it, you shouted me down in this meeting and called me, I can't, what did you call me? A waste of space? Yeah. So that doesn't look like respect to me. Factually, yes. Because that was the sixth meeting that happened. Patience has a limit, yeah? And you talk about respect, but that goes both ways. Yeah? So you're not the only one who feels you're not being respected. I feel I listen, I'm patient, but the reality is there's so much going on, I kind of feel you want to hold the limelight. And you don't recognise there's a whole team of people that need to be heard. It's not just about you. And my job is trying to be fair, but it's really hard when someone doesn't get the fact it's not just about you. I, I just want to put yeah? in on something I've, I've just heard from both of you. I mean, it sounds as though what you're both saying is that respect is important for both of you. Yeah. Yeah. So I wonder if the, the two of you maybe could just take a moment and just around that issue of respect, maybe you could just share with each other something that you would like to change about how the other person respects you. John, do you want to, do you want to share with what, what is it you need from I would, to like to feel, I would like to feel like Owen listens to me. We did have six meetings, but I kept repeating myself because you weren't listening, or I didn't feel like you heard me. So. And what does, what does listening, just more specifically, what does, what does listening actually look like? How, how would you know you listen? <sighs> that he responds, maybe says, I just dropped the ball. I, I forgot about your holiday request. Just it's something like that. Okay. And Owen, for you, what does, what, what does listening look like? What does that look like to you? Well, first of all, I want to say, I've already apologised, but it doesn't seem to make any difference, number one, I thought I already had apologised. Respect is like, when I say something, it's not challenging me the first opportunity. It's as though you're not listening, you're just snapping. And actually, I'm saying something for a reason, and believe it or not, I am actually trying to help. But you don't listen to the feedback I give you. It's all negative, it's all... Yeah, defense, all the next, all the and, and after negative. a while, that gets really, really hard. And I kind of feel like that means don't think I'm anything as a manager, and that really actually hurts. So, so Owen, just, just to check in, did I hear you, you just said that you had apologised for having missed that annual leave request? I... I believe I had, maybe in the moment. <laughs> but it's not easy when you feel on the defence all the time. So it sounds yeah. like there's been a bit of a build-up here of, of the situation? Uh, every day for the last three years. This was a big deal. Would you deny me? that? No, I don't think we've been communicating efficiently for three years, probably since you have been my manager. So, just in terms of, and, and this issue keeps coming up, this issue around communicating and the way in which you both communicate. Joanna, you've, you've said that re responding um, and demonstrating that he's heard what you've had to say is something that you would like to see. Uh, is that something that, that is, is manageable for you, Owen? Is that something to give that response that shows, Joanna, that, that you've heard? I mean, I mean, if you want to just clarify what that, what, give an example of what that might sound like. Well, this was a big deal, okay? And, and you just admitted that you didn't really apologize. You thought you might have apologized. I didn't hear any of that. Uh, so you've impacted, or I don't want to sound blamey, but my summer looks a lot different to the way I hoped it would. So if you just say, sorry about that, you know. To that acknowledgement of An acknowledgement of, of what's happened. I don't have to keep bringing it up again. Because mm, it feels like whatever I say, it will be that. Okay. And, and do you feel that that's something you do do? Acknowledgement, is that something you think you could, that, that can be added to, uh, to the communication between the two of you? I feel I do, but clearly it's not working. If I'm honest, it's hard to know what to do. You, you try and push on all these doors and nothing seems to work. After a while, you bang your head against the brick wall and you just try and do the best you can. But when your patience is gone, I mean, it's not easy. Day in, day out. Do you, I mean, I, I, mean I will, I, I'll, I'll, I'll do, if you look, it sounds like that has really, really impacted you and the family. Yeah, I didn't know if you had a holiday plan. Are you, probably mentioned it, and I'll be honest with you, it probably slipped through my mind. And if, look, if we'll be absolutely honest, when you asked in July, it's hard even say this, but I'll say it, it was pretty overwhelming. I was looking at a team of five, four people wanted to have leave in the same month, you know, in the same July. I actually put off having a holiday so that I could be there for the team. I got flat for that at home, but I decided, well, this is what the manager does. So I felt I was... <coughs> 
prepared to take one for the team, so it's the right thing to do. And I felt, if I'm honest with you, it, you're not going to like this. It completely slipped my mind. There's no conspiracy. I just completely forgot about it. And I know that is not what you want to hear. There must be something else, but the truth is, I just got it completely wrong. But it was because I'm trying to cover all these bases. I don't feel I'm being supported myself from head office. Can, can I just take this moment to check? Is, is that the sort of acknowledgement you're, you're talking about? Yeah, if I'd known the backstory, I wouldn't have brought it up six times at every meeting. You know, if you just tell me what's going on, I can help you. I can, I can step up and help with tasks. You know, if you're overwhelmed, that's what I'm there for. So um, we can certainly come back to this. I mean, it's clear that both of you are, are, are on, on the same page in terms of the importance of acknowledgement and, and demonstrating that you've listened. Just to come back to the, the point that you raised earlier, which was um, not challenging at the first opportunity. Do you want to say a bit more about that and what that might look like? Yeah. So I actually think that giving feedback in the best way you can is a really important part of the job. And I think actually that can be about showing respect as well. You may not want to hear it, but isn't that part of my job? Um, that's the way I was taught, um, and it's not actually easy giving feedback as a manager. It's not actually very easy giving feedback, especially difficult feedback. It's not easy for the person giving it, but I do it because it's the right thing to do, and there are just one too many things that have just been slipping. And my hope was that you would pick up on that because I thought, this is really clear. You'll get the hang of this. You were experienced. You're good in many ways at what you do. You figure it out. But you haven't seemed to have picked it up. So when I address this stuff, I think you find it patronizing difficult, but we've got a lot to do here and you're not clearly not picking it up. So I have to address it because otherwise I'm not doing my job. Do you, you know what I mean? I do, but were you to communicate that, we wouldn't have these problems. I don't get feedback from you. I get fill in your timesheet or that wasn't great. I never get well done, Joanna. You did great in that meeting, or that presentation was fantastic. All I all I get is, you know, all I hear right. is a negative. Okay, so you hear negative. I actually do. I know we have a job to do. I want to do the job, but yeah. you're my manager. I would like to be supported and respected to do okay. that. So it sounds like there's something like it, there's some halfway here. Because I would say I want to encourage people. You know, I want to. Well, don't be afraid answers, to. But then you need to give me more reasons to give you that phrase. Ah. No, 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 well, I'm being honest. I'm not being difficult. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 So, so back, back, back to you, I guess, in relation, because, uh, again, this comes back in uh, on this issue of acknowledgement. And what we can do is we can come back to the issue of acknowledgement when we come to maybe formulate the agreement. We'll have a look at what acknowledgement means, how you can get some more of that. How um, Joanna can maybe make it easier for you to be able to give her some of that acknowledgement yeah. that she said she needs. But I do want to tackle the, the second issue, which was the, the what Joanna can do to help yeah. you feel like she isn't challenging you at the first opportunity. Okay. Um, yeah, all right. So if you feel, when we talk, when I try and share conversation <coughs> after a, you know, a, a weekly catch up session or something, rather than me feeling I've got to tackle this, this list of things here, you know, and I'm looking at the first, if you feel there's something that you did well, like, come out and say it, you know, don't be afraid to say, I, did, I felt I did this really well. But also, like, it's really helpful for the manager if you can proactively share what you found hard. Like, I used to think that was, before I was a manager, that was a sign of weakness. If I give the game away, they'll all know. Actually, now I manage, I appreciate just how helpful it is to have someone who proactively offers you stuff and you realise it changes the conversation. Because then it's not this kind of battle, this tug of war. It's like we're sitting on the same side of the table, but how are we going to do this? And the, the mood completely changes, it's such a different conversation. So if you could do that, I guess the learning's for me, if I can do that more. I think that's what I've been wanting to do. I mean, that's, that's a normal and sensible way to work, right? But you've been making it difficult. I don't want to say I'm vulnerable here because I feel like you're going to be, you know, so cracking John, down. How, how does he make it difficult? Do you want to just explain to him? Well, it's just that there hasn't been any communication about, about what he wants staff to say. Um, how to feedback on this management, or what we're doing as a company. Um, so yeah, just keep your head down. I'll take a moment just to summarise back, because I think we're moving into to what's starting to look like some areas of agreement here. So certainly this area of communication is obviously very important. Um, Joanna, you said you want acknowledgement, acknowledgement of things such as when you aren't getting leave to be able to be told that, acknowledgement of what you're doing well. Um, conversely, what you said, uh, uh, but uh, along the same lines there, is actually 
if Joanna was communicating more with you and letting you know what she was doing well um, or anything she struggled with, that would help you in turn give feedback and more acknowledgement for her. So, yeah. so if the two of you started to move <coughs> along those lines, actually, would there be anything that could sort of prevent the two of you, certain if, if we were able to make an agreement around that today, would, would anything else prevent you from, from moving forward here today? I think just knowing that we're on the same side and just... Yeah. And that you've apologised. That yeah. means a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and you recognise how hard it is being the manager. I respect your um, position as a manager. No, but no, no and I, I can see now that it actually sounded like it was really, really difficult, and I am sorry for that. I truly am. Okay. Um, it sounds like it's been a really challenging situation, but the two of you are certainly set, sound like you're moving towards an agreement. So perhaps if we took a break now, um, when we come back, we could start to maybe formulate this into a, a bit of an agreement around specifically what the two of you need. Sounds good, let's do it. How to compress a full day's mediation into 30 minutes. <laughs> 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 yeah, but, but no idea where it's going. <laughs> 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 Joanna, uh, Thomas, and Owen are uh, going to be three of our uh, regular resolution team at, at TCM Group, and I hope, you know, like, I agree they've done a fantastic job of getting the message across and getting the message across. And I hope they've done a fantastic job of getting the message across. I agree they've done a fantastic job of, of trying to bring the mediation process to life in what is a very, very small period of time. But they are absolutely fantastic mediators, trainers and enablers of the mediation process. So I'd just like to say thank you to each of you for, for your efforts in making that work. Like I said, we just, it was so beautifully rehearsed. <laughs> but it was fantastic. Thank you very much. So that's what we do. And I, have to, and I think it's really useful to end the conference on this note. Because what Thomas did there is what this is all about at the end of the day. And I think there's a, it, it's, it reminds us to remain grounded that at the end of the day, there are real people having real issues and real challenges. And the real purpose of resolution is about culture change and ROI and all the, the rest of it. Absolutely is key. But actually the real benefit of what we're talking about here is the process that Owen and Joanna have been through to help them find some satisfaction, get back to work, get back to the job that they want to do, that they're employed to do, and be a productive, efficient, happy, effective member of your business and drive growth within your businesses, which is, after all, what we're all looking for, whatever, however we might measure that growth through value, best value, or um, shareholder. David, can uh, I ask value. a question there? Of course, what yeah. what was really probably. interesting was that you didn't pick up on the fact when he said about your resentment since she went for the job and I thought maybe that's an elephant in the room the fact that it's gone on for three years and the fact that there had obviously been because it all seemed not on the surface but that's fine but I thought there may be something much when you said it's about loss yeah. and I was thinking about whether there's anything about your loss in terms of not getting that position and resentment or competition or so I just wondered you that would be an area I would. Uh, I mean, you, I know you, you deep dive into those yeah. areas, but absolutely with that shadow. Mm -hmm. I think in the time allotted yeah. to do the deep dive into those deep <laughs> psychological, yeah. I think <laughs> you're, you're, you're right to flag it and pick it up. I think um, had had we had that that opportunity, then we would have had a good old rummage around in that particular one because it was a, it was there and it was gl yeah. glaringly obvious yeah. to it. So thank yeah. you for raising that. But I think given the the constraints getting them to at least a point where they have some some cons <laughs> convergence if you will we, but we, we do a lot of this we have we have, we, have, uh, <laughs> we have videos on our websites we do mock-up sessions there's loads we do at tcm to get the message out there and if you're interested i know a number of you have approached us over the course of the conference and said look would you come on site some of you we've worked with want to do some little refresher sessions brilliant for those of you who are thinking this is maybe a route we'd like to go in and you'd just like us to come in and do a session with your HR team and do a little mock-up and get into a bit more detail so we aren't missing some of those issues, you know, we'll come and do, that's what we're about, that's what we'll do to come in and help promote that kind of culture and that dialogue. So I think it's time to wrap up, that's been a fantastic day, I hope, you, I hope you'll agree. Um, I stopped putting words in your mouth because there's an evaluation form in your pack. Uh, <laughs> um, that's the worst mediation pack because you can say. Um, <laughs> so there is an evaluation form. There's also, you probably may at point some point you just say there's a request for further information for, uh, form. So if you do, if you said, if you if we've said something, you think, oh, just give me a call. Uh, we'll do that. So on the back of the evaluation form is a request for further information. Please do let us have your feedback. 
We've run these several times, but you know, we're learning all the time on how to do these, to kind of these kind of events. If there's anything you think you could have done differently or added, brought another perspective or dimension, let us know. And Norman, we might do another one in 2019. <laughs> no, we may well do. And we do a lot of stuff. We'll move it slowly. We'll, and we do a lot of stuff virtually as well. So we use go to webinar, go to meeting, go to training a lot. So again, there's lots and lots of things we do. So does anyone have any final, going back to the takeaways, does anyone have any final things that you're going to take away from the session? Any sort of, yeah, any actions or moments of, of thought you'd like to say? Can I ask quickly a really yeah, quick mundane question? You know the agreement that they have at the end, what does that look like? Is it bullet points? Is it... Is it emailed to people? Do yeah. they sign it? Yeah, no, I think um, the more detailed you can make it, the better. You know, it acts as kind of a, a safety net, if you like, for these two people who might have had a, a great conversation on the day, uh, but it's very easy to revert to type when you're back in the office. So actually, it's kind of like a reassurance for both of them, um, the more detailed versions. Um, but sometimes you don't, you don't really need a detailed version. Sometimes you have a great conversation on the day and actually they understand um, uh, sort of ideologically, if you like, where each other are coming from, and actually that sometimes is enough. So it could be anything from the lip points all the way through to you know nine point ten point agreement with, with detailed actions on exactly when and where they can do things. Actually, are there any other questions? I know these kind of events. We ran this at CIPD, and I think we had about an hour's worth of questions after the event. So, and does anyone else have any further questions for the mediators or all the parties there? And. Uh, um, <coughs> Before I kind of rush on, I just want to make sure. Like I say, if there are any others and you haven't, don't want to ask them now, email us or tweet them and we will try and respond. To you. I should also put some of the Twitter things up there, I just didn't get a chance. Um, so don't forget the resolution redefined um, hashtag. If you go onto it, you'll probably see what people are saying and the kind of questions that they're asking. I'm, I'm looking forward to reading those on the train home. So if you could fill in the evaluation forms, that would be great, please, and leave those on the way out along with your name badges. So just in, in summary of today, we've had some amazing and fantastic speakers. I mean, what a lineup for a conference. I mean, I go to a lot of conferences, and I don't think I've necessarily sat there and seen such a fantastic mix of case studies, practitioners, and policy makers and leaders in their own right. So clearly we've had the Lancaster London Hotel, who, again, thank you so much for hosting today. It's been fantastic, and what a lovely, lovely venue. Um, we've had Engage for Success, Kathy Brown, we've had Royal Mail Group, Jane Fairhurst and the team, it's fair to say, talking about their experiences. We had Johnny Gifford from the CIPD talking about the HR perspective. We had Lloyds Banking Group, April and Sue, talking about Lloyds perspective and some of the really um, inspirational changes that have been happening, happening there. Myself, you'll form your own view on that. Um, <laughs> Kate, Kate, Kate Morgan slash Kate Cooper, of course, from the ILM, who gave such a great, uh, a great presentation. Thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed that and uh, really reminded us of the importance of leadership. And of course, Pat representing the resolution team at Islington Council and those, you know, those first steady steps into a resolution culture, which was, which was great. And of course, seeing the mediation in action. So it was a jam packed and quite uh, um, uh, optimistic agenda, but we finished on time. Please do let me know how we can help within TCM. You know, we're only a small business. You know, we've been trying to sell mediation through the longest and um, seemingly the deepest recession in a generation. People still think we, we are going to come in and sell them some meditation or medication. Um, we're kind of a bit beyond that now. But it's been a bruising and challenging uh, almost 10 years of trying to sell something that almost you, people don't want. They've never heard of it. And when they do know they need it, they kind of deny that it's, it exists. So it's not the easiest product to get out there and sell. But it's great to have so many people who are obviously, like us, becoming passionate and subscribing to it. And clearly we've worked with you and hopefully will work with you in one form or another. The products that we sell, obviously, around internal mediation schemes, that's where our real passion lies, that proactive work. But if you have a case on your desk when you're going back to the office tomorrow and you're thinking, oh, how can I deal with this? I wonder if mediation might work. Then please give us a call. We're always there to advise, to guide, support, and, of course, perhaps to mediate. We provide investigation services as well. We do them very, very well. We know how to do them well because we've seen them done very badly. And so we also train workplace investigators. I've mentioned the resolution audit. If you'd like someone to come in and do a pulse 
of where you are right now and reflect back. We use appreciative inquiry models in our, in our approach, so we're focusing on the positives and we provide a red, amber, green analysis of the organisation, but we certainly look to draw out the positives when we're doing our resolution audits. And for those organisations who've started with a resolution audit, I believe have got the most sustainable and effective mediation programmes when they've begun to implement them, in my, in my view. So those are the kind of areas of work that we do. And we also train accredited mediators. Our National Certificate in Workplace Mediation is very much the flagship standard for workplace mediators. And we run those courses open access, although I think they're all full for the next six months. But we have got more courses we're bringing online. And we've got a special NHS version of the course that we're running in May or June, uh, which I'll get some more information out in due course. Managing difficult conversations or confident conversations, as it's, as it's known within the organisation. So there's lots that we do. But... Finally, the sort of, yeah, thank you very much. And as I said, the one thing, I think if there's one thing when I'm training managers and leaders that I, that I think can make the biggest difference is that 30 seconds of empathy. I'll go back to the presentation. The next business decision, just use that 30 seconds of empathy. And I hope that you'll email me and say it was a better decision because of empathy. And I think that that is how we begin to institute empathy within our organisations. I think it's, for me, one of the most powerful drivers of connectedness and relationships and togetherness and actually actually contributes to better the decisions. But take away hopefully a lot from today and I look forward to hearing from you and working with you in the future. So thank you all very much indeed and have a lovely evening. Thank you. Thank you very much.